www.guys.co.uk network radio. This week's show is a journey into consciousness, working through the wonderful trance mediumship of Mick and Sylvie Avery, with wisdom brought through by spirit guide Gregory Hay. I'm going to throw some questions at you around the, the topic of global warming, actually, because yes. um, it's been a hot topic, really, this week across yes. the internet yes. um, and in the news as well. Quite so, for good reason. For good reasons. There's. I don't know if you know about the the hack that happened or the whistleblower. Um, somebody released some information. Um, well, basically, to put it into a nutshell, there's a unit called the British the Britain's Climate Research Unit at the University of East Anglia. Yes. And um, d- during last week, a hacker or whistleblower hacked in and stole what we would term as a 61 megabyte file of confidential data. And that data was posted up onto a Russian website, I believe. Now, the, the content of this um, this document contained, if true, damning evidence that certain scientists or governing bodies have been manipulating or exploiting um, climate change data in some way or exploiting it to make it worse than it actually is, according to this um, leaked document. What they're suggesting is that, according to the data, it seemed that the global warming was coming down and they were perplexed by this and didn't like the idea that the data was showing it was coming down. And so they've been manipulating it to, to, to show it continually going up. Um, but obviously one thing we can't hide is the fact that we are getting floods. I mean, what happened in, in Cumbria, um, according to news reports, is one in a thousand years, biblical proportion floods. Um, we've been having an ever-increase of um, catastrophic floods in the UK, from Boss Castle to North Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, Sheffield, Derbyshire, uh, a place called Morfet. I've got a climate map that shows um, agricultural output in 2006 and the globe there looks pretty healthy with green colours pretty much in all the places that output um, food and the same map in 2009 shows red in an alarming number of places where they've got drought, extreme drought or historic drought. Yes. So there's obviously a number of confusing messages that are going across the internet. There's a whole community now of sceptics that are very happy um, almost um, quite smug in a way that perhaps climate change is a big farce but then what is happening around the planet at the moment with Cumbria and, and the droughts? Yes, so well very well my dear friend the point and issue to begin with is to say that scientifically for the planet itself there are going to be pits and troughs there are going to be situations, cyclical, other cyclical events, which happen en masse at around about 10 to 12 year cycles, which will uh, then mean that uh, there will be various dips in temperature as well as rises in temperature. However, the and, and what will j- just basically happen is that you will then have certain years within that 10 or 12 year cycle whereby uh, the temperature generally suddenly sways from one thing to another, usually at the, toward the end of the 10 or 12 year cycle, uh, before it then begins anew. And it will it sway either to being much colder or much warmer. The situation, however, is that the general trend on mass for the whole situation has become that it's still very erratic. And in the main, the whole climate situation and probability is not just focused on um, layman's predictions or whatever, or the predictions of a certain set of people. There are most certainly uh, people, climatologists, who actually are focused very much on the disproving of there being climate problems upon the earth, actually because they have vested interest, because they're in the pay of 
uh, companies who want to continue the program of uh, using fossil fuels or whatever. So obviously what you have to look at when looking and observing any data on your side of life is that it depends entirely upon what the funding, where the funding comes from for the particular group who creates the data in the first place. And also where their data comes from, it may also be specifically enhanced because that was where they thought they were going to have to take measurements from. And in actual fact, the whole situation, the picture has shifted and changed in exactly the same way as you would have the change in, let's see, now the the situation which is often unpredictable or very difficult to predict has been in the past the jet stream uh, uh, within the uh, outer atmosphere which actually tends to normally cover a certain specific route it covers a, a certain kind of waveform that it delivers throughout and right across the planet the point is the problem comes when there are different situations of uh, uh, change caused by great climatic shifts which are driven in, en masse usually by the ocean currents and the ocean's temperature, mean temperature and other situations surrounding that. So oftentimes data comes in within specific bodies that are not necessarily uh, bringing about in, and in being inclusive of all of the different paradigms which are figuring very heavily in, in the data transmission. So you may well have situations from one university or another who may uh, profess a certain specific guidance within climatic uh, uh, graphs and that kind of thing to show uh, certain kinds of conditions illuminating, but that in actual fact what's happening is that they may not actually be taking in all of the global measurements all at the same time. And that part of it is really, in a sense, uh, addressing certain balances, particularly, of course, to the, the little group of islands upon which you live at present, friend, purely and simply because it's uh, oftentimes very, in its erratic nature, the simple fact of its placement where it is creates the anomalies of very fatigued weather patterns which is exactly what happened in the state of Cumbria and the recent flooding thereon, uh, purely and simply because you had a squall which was then, in fact, uh, isolated and brought to a standstill by the very fact that of your the nature of islands and the various different impactions from both the oceanic uh, situation and also the, uh, the upper strata atmospheric conditions to do with uh, these uh, various anomalies, these various situations then created the distilled pattern of, uh, uh, in, in a sense, uh, creating the, uh, the great negative trough and causing it to halt and, and really be very stilled in that particular place. I have to say also that uh, uh, in a bearing upon all of these climatic shifts at this present time, of course, are also uh, matched with the various conditions that China have been uh, creating, the various anomalies that they've been creating within their weather patterns purely and simply because they've been changing them. And these are also having marked effects upon other parts of the planet. And they've been changing them using chemical uh, dilations, which then either create clouds, clouds and rainfall or disperses them completely. And of course, this was uh, has been carried out en masse for some time, for some years. And so this also is having a marked effect upon the whole climate of not just the region, but also uh, affecting other situations as well. Being that China is actually on a similar part of it, it's on a similar uh, uh, bandwidth of, uh, the, of the planet itself to uh, both... Uh, your country and various parts of Europe too. So it means to say that similar band shifts then uh, in a sense become occupied there too. Uh, it